These are our works, which prove what we have done. Look, therefore, at our works when we are gone. And when we are dead, seek for our resting place, not in the earth, but in the hearts and minds of men. My debt to death shall be paid, so that my labor lives on. Name of God, the merciful and compassionate, an account of events that befell upon certain journeys. This chronicle was begun on the 30th of Shawwal, 578th year after the Hijrah, or the 25th of February, 1183, according to the Franks. We sailed from Sierra Nevada, intending to do the Hajj at the holy city of Mecca. God in his favor has granted us safety and security through the lands and seas of Egypt, the deserts of the Arabs and Hejaz, and into Baghdad, the city of peace. May God protect me. This journey has taken me to the beautiful lands of Sham, with its fragrant air that eases its heat, as a cool breeze brushes over your head on a burning day. But I long for home. It is the 26th of Safar, of the year 580 after the Hijrah, and we ride towards Ra's al Ain on the horses we bought from Mosul, durable beasts, and I am grateful for their long company. We traveled that Saturday night until after midnight, and then halted at a village. We removed from it in the forenoon of Saturday, and took our midday rest at another village called Al-Hamidiyah, under a bridge arched over a stream. 
which the water hastened by. We enjoyed the blessed repose. We passed our night in that village by the path. We left it by night, and in the morning of Sunday, we came to another village called El Muayliya. From there, we went on to spend the night in a larger village called Judel, which has a towering ancient fort. That day, we had seen in the far distance Jebed al Judi, mentioned in the Book of God, Most Exalted, where came to rest the Ark of Noah, on whom be eternal happiness. We lodged in Judel, in a Khan outside, and there passed the night of Wednesday, the second of Rabi al Awwal. We left in the morning in a large caravan of mules with men from the Hauran in Aleppo and some others from Bilad Bakr and its surroundings, leaving behind the pilgrims of these parts on camels. Our march continued until the beginning of noon. We were ready and on guard against attacks by Kurdish marauders who were the apparent scourge of these parts. On the outside, this realm is a natural paradise, having the trees and plants of Andalusia, radiant with abundance and prosperity, bright with color and splendor. The river flows down to it from a spring that issues from a nearby mountain. It divides at its source, one branch taking its way through the plains and cultivation. Over this river has been built a bridge of hard stone, Weary, yet still durable. We took our midday rest that Wednesday, and a long distance ahead was the city of Marod, which sits on the mountain's edge, and at its summit a large castle. These lands belong to the Rum, and its people remain here to give allegiance to the Emir Khutbidi. It has a wide village, and it's surrounded by vast plains, reminiscent of the character of deserts. It is, however, filled with aromatic plants greenery in all directions. Qutbaddin, also the lord of Ra's al Ain. He is a kinsman of the two sons of Babak. These countries are subject to various rulers after the fashion of the kings of the Arab nation in Spain. All of them embellish themselves with titles connected with religion, and you will hear only awesome by-names and appellations that for the wise men are without profit. Not one of these men deserved their name, save Salah al-Din, Sultan of Syria, the Hijaz, and Yemen, and famous for his virtue and justice. Here the name is in harmony with the subject, and the words fit the meaning. All other titles are but a gust of air, and testimonials made void. We return to the story of our journey. May God bring near its end. We left after the Friday prayers and passed a large perch called Tell al the Hill of the Eagle. The Christians here pay tribute for Muslim protection. The visage of this land reminded me of the hills of Andalusia in its beauty and freshness, being surrounded by gardens and all kinds of trees. Beside us flows a wide forced river on which spreads the shades of the gardens lined along it. Then we saw suckling pigs, like sheep in their number, and their tameness towards the people they meet. With the dawn, we betook ourselves from here, and before noon of that day, came to Ra's al -Ain. This name, Ra's al -Ain, the font of water, is a most fitting designation, and in this place are the most excellent of properties. For God Most High has given vent to springs in its ground that pour forth fresh water. They divide into branches and flow in channels spread through the green meadows like strips of silver stretching across a sheet of emerald, beset with trees and gardens that are disposed along their banks till the end of their cultivated valleys. Of these springs, two are the most copious, and one is situated higher than the other. The higher rises from the ground between hard stones that form something like the hollow of a cave. The water then pours forth like one of the greatest rivers until it comes to the other spring. The water is clearer than pure water and sweeter than the spring of Selsebil and leaves visible all that is in it. If the villages of Andalusia had such a beautiful sight for such sweet springs, they would be of the very best. 
verily the creation of God belongs only to him. As for the city itself, the interests of its Bedouins are cared for, and its urban side neglected, however. It has no walls to defend it, no finely built houses to adorn it. It has been as if sacrificed as a victim to a desert, as nothing more but an amulet for its valleys. It nevertheless has all the conveniences of a town, but the signs of age are about it, announcing a coming dissolution. The town, however, has markets that are admirably disposed and wonderfully arranged they all roofed with wood, and men within them are never out of the long shade. You pass through them as you would pass through a house with large corridors. In the fine arrangement of these adjoining markets, we observe the splendid spectacle, and the harmony of design is such as is rarely found in cities. Our stay that day had been for refreshment, and for all our journey we had not been cheated. There are many men here of good will, who are just, kind to strangers, and generous towards the poor. The people of Shem, from here, to Damascus, to the Arbuk, in all of Syria, are of this way, of being kind to strangers, and bounteous to the poor. The destute will never have a need amongst them. In this way they display a hereditary inclination towards generosity. Indeed. The attitude of the people in these parts is remarkable. May God advantage and benefit them from what they are about. On Saturday, we removed from Ra's al Ain at sunset, being wishful of profiting from the darkness and coolness of the night and evading the choking heat of the middle of the day. After a two day journey, there were no habitations on the way. We fared until the morning and alighted by a well. We rested a little, and then set forth again when the sun had risen in the morning of Sunday. We marched until the afternoon, and dismounted at a high tower with ancient ruins known as Burjo Hawet, the Tower of Eve. We came upon a man of a saintly aspect and devout manner, of cheerful and happy countenance, and kind and generous to me. He treated us sociably and prayed for us. There we passed part of the night and moved on until the morning. Praise be to God for smoothing of the way and granting us the privilege of meeting this wonderful man. On the night of Wednesday, the 9th of Rabi'a al-Awwal, after a measure of sleep, we took to our saddles and rode until the morning, then alighted at an inhabited spot called Tel Abda. This mound is high and broad like a table, and contains ancient ruins, and most importantly, running water. We removed ourselves at sunset and journeyed throughout the night. To the right of the road, as we look over the Euphrates towards Syria, is the city of Sarud. We reached the Euphrates in the morning and crossed it in well-found boats fitted for the passage. We stayed at a fort inhabited by Bedouins called Alad Nechim, the castle of Star. We rested there while a caravan finished its crossing. We've come within the heart of Syria, within the dominion of Salah al-Din, all the way to Damascus. As you look over the marvelous river, you see the city of Arraqqa. Bordering it is the town of Malik ibn Tawq, known as Rahba al Sham. We moved on when the first third of the night had passed and rode until we came to the city of Menbij, may God protect it. This is a town of wide extent and healthy of air. It is encompassed by ancient walls of great length. Its skies are bright, its aspect handsome, its breezes fragrant and perfumed. While its day gives generous shade, its night is all enchantment, east and west gardens thick with trees and diverse fruits and cold town. Water flows freely through it and enters all its parts. God has favored it with wells within that house water sweeter than honey and delicious to the taste. Each house has a well, or even two, 
and the earth is generous, throwing forth springs of water everywhere. Its markets and streets are broad and spacious, its shops and booths and the khans, warehouses in size and grandness. The population is virtuous, undefiled by those decadent sects and corrupt beliefs that are found in the mountains of this country. It was most impressive to me that the population spoke Greek. We encamped outside the city in one of its gardens and stayed there resting for a day. We departed at midnight and arrived at Buzah. May God watch over it. Standing on a plain of fertile ground and of broad extent, it is smaller than a city but larger than a village. At its higher part, there is a large ancient fortress. In the past, it is said, a king sought to capture this town and became enraged by its stubbornness, so he ordered the destruction of its walls, leaving it weak and abandoned. This area between the two valleys came to be known as El Beb, the gate. 8 years ago, the way beyond was inhabited by some heretics whose numbers only God could count. The sparks of their malevolence flew and their mischief and wrongdoing stopped this road so that fury possessed the other peoples of these regions who moved by scorn and anger collected against them from all sides, putting them to the edge of their swords and exterminating them to the last man. Their last remaining people made haste to Masyaf Castle after their brethren the skulls were piled high in this valley. God was sufficient defense for the people against these enemies, these devious creatures causing their deceits to fall upon their own heads. We passed Saturday reposing in this valley, but moved from it at night. On Monday, we saw the lands of Al Ma'arra. The grounds are dark with olive, fig, and pistachio trees, and all kinds of fruits. Their luxuriant gardens and well ordered hills stretch for a distance of two days' journey. It is one of the most fertile and beautiful regions in Muslim land. Beyond yonder are the mountains of Lebanon towering height and great length, extending all the way to the sea coast. On their slopes are castles belonging to those heretical sects called the Hashashin. They have swerved from God and vested divinity into a man. Their prophet is a devil in a man's disguise called Sinan, who deceived them with falsehoods and chimeras embellished for them to act upon. He bewitched them with these black arts so that they took him as a god and worshipped him. They abased themselves before him, reaching such a state of obedience and subjugation that had he ordered one of them to fall from a mountain top, he would do so, and with the alacrity that he might be pleased. God in his power allows to stray those whom he wills and guides whom he wishes. The mountains of Lebanon are the frontier between Muslim lands and those of the Franks, for beyond it lie Antioch and Latakia, and others of their cities, may God restore them to their rightful inhabitants. On the slopes of the mountain lies a fortress of Kurd, it belongs to the Franks, and from it they make raids on Hama and Ems, whence it can be seen. Ems is on the right of the road to Damascus. Its inhabitants are renowned for their courage and relentless struggles. In this, the people of Aleppo come after them. What think you of a town that is only a few miles from the fortress of the Franks, the stronghold of an enemy where you can see their fires whose sparks burn when they fly, and whence each day should they wish? That enemy may raid you on horseback. We ask the Sheikh that we have met, if there were any hospitals in Hems. He first said that there was not, and then added, Hems is all a hospital, and proof enough of that 
is the evidence of its people. At sunset we set forward and journeyed all night and on until the sun was high in the morning of Tuesday, the 22nd of Rabi' al-Awwal. We halted at a village called Al-Qarra, which belongs to Christians who dwell here under a tree and in which there are no Muslims. We rested here and generous hosts offered us an evening meal. After seizing a little slumber, we bent our way around and journeyed throughout the rest of the night. The road from Hems to Damascus is sparsely populated, but the sounds of the breeze sliding across the valley and into the plain soothes my ears and cooled my head. We rested for another meal before sleep overtakes us, until eventually it did, till the beginning of noon, when we departed. We passed through Thaniyat al the Eagle's Pass, which overlooks the plain of Damascus and its surroundings. At this pass, the road divides in two, one branch being that on which we had come, and the other going eastward into the desert of al Samawa, and all the way into Iraq. From this pass, we descended the bed of a valley between the mountains, and came to a marvelous plain where we alighted at a place called al Qusayr. We left in the morning, passing between continuous gardens of beauty beyond the scope of description. Finally, we arrived in Damascus, the forenoon of Thursday, the 24th of Rabi' al-Awwal. Praise be to God, the Lord of the Universe.